Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. John sent me a note about a story, and um, you know, here's one of those things. I talk a lot about homeowner associations and condo associations, and and although condos are different than freestanding homes, quite often uh, they have a lot of similarities in how much control they have over what you do on your property. So this is from WLS out of Chicago. Woman fears foreclosure after dispute with condo association involving her carpet, her carpet. Now, I've mentioned before the most extreme examples I've heard about homeowners associations is they'll say things like, well, you can only paint your house certain colors from a certain color palette. I've also heard them say, if your drapes are visible from the street, they have to be a certain color also, even though they're inside your house. And so here, it's the carpeting. And you might go, wait, 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 wait. The carpeting? is something that the condo board is going to complain about? Well, yes, and it makes a little bit of sense, but then how did it get the point of foreclosure? And that's actually a different story altogether. So can a condo association take your home away over a carpeting dispute? A woman who lives in a condo in Prospect Heights and says her condo association has falsely accused her of removing her wall-to-wall carpeting now says her condo is at risk. So she says the accusation is even false, but of course that gets you to, well, if it was true, would it work? Uh, The ABC 7i team went through her apartment, but I'm guessing it's a condo, and saw the carpeting that she's being accused of removing firsthand. She showed the condo to a reporter and said, as you can clearly see, carpeting everywhere. It's still here. Never been touched, never removed. But the condo association sued her for breaking their bylaws, which state that units must all have wall-to-wall carpeting. You might say, but Steve, why would they have a rule about that? You can't see that from the outside. Well, I'm guessing, because they described it as an apartment also, is that she might have somebody who lives below her and somebody who lives above her. And if people don't have carpeting, it might be louder when people walk on the floor than if they do have carpeting. So the wall-to-wall carpeting is not about looks it's about sound that's what i'm guessing okay but here's the thing back in 2009 she asked the association for permission to remove the carpeting because of her allergies in her request to the board she included letters from her doctor she said she uses air filters to battle allergens but but she says it's a losing battle i have asthma severe allergies to carpeting and dust mites as well as an autoimmune condition that is really severely aggravated by several things, one of them being carpeting. Replacing the carpet, she said, should have qualified as a reasonable accommodation under the uh, Fair Housing Act. She was disappointed by the condo association's rejection because they said, no, you can't do that. But then in 2010, they sued her for removing her carpeting. So this now, keep in mind, happened 14 years ago. According to the suit, the association said that she had replaced the carpeting in the property with hardwood flooring, and this caused a neighbor to hear furniture being moved on uncarpeted floors and other loud activities, which violated their bylaws. So now the question is, why did they think that? We don't know. But she missed her court date. She said she was sick, and then the judge ruled in favor of the condo board and found her in default. And so if you get sued and you do not respond or answer or take the legal steps necessary to fight the case, a party who's suing you can go into court and say they never answered, they never responded, I am entitled to win. And the granting of that motion is called a default. You get a default. And then you can go into court with a default and say, I am now entitled to a judgment. And depends on the court rules and your pleadings, sometimes you can get a judgment based on your pleadings and the judge will just say, oh, you asked for $19,000, I'm going to give you $19,000. On the other hand, if it says I'm seeking damages in excess of, without an actual dollar value, you know, like in excess of $25,000, you can then go into court, put on proofs, and get a judgment for the amount that the court finds is appropriate based on your proofs and your pleadings and so on. But bad things will happen to you if you don't answer your complaint or show up in court. So she says she missed her court date back in 2009, and the judge granted a judgment of almost forty. dollars thousand dollars four zero comma zero 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 forty thousand dollars with fees fines and interest from non-payment in all those years 
The judgment got up to $588,000, and that was in 2021. So there's been more interest since then. There's a thing called post-judgment interest that occurs and gets tacked onto a judgment. So if you get hit with a judgment for $10,000 and you don't pay it, every single day you don't pay it, interest gets tacked on. And post-judgment interest will add up. The condo association has now filed foreclosure documents on her home saying that she's owe, you know, she owes them $580,000 plus. And she says, my life has been turned upside down. So the I-team reached out to the condo board and its attorneys, but they did not respond back. And she said, how can they tell you what to do in your own home? Now, this is the thing. I've talked about this before. When you buy a condo or a home in a homeowner's association, the deed will often say right in it, anybody who owns this property is bound by the rules and regulations of the association, okay? And I once owned a condo. I was on the board, and I remember reading the rules when I bought the condo. And I also remember being on the board and having people come in and going, I didn't know these rules existed. And we'd say, well, you know what's built into your deed? And they're like, who reads that? And so a lot of states have passed laws now saying that you must disclose, that is, warn the buyer, just so you know you're buying into a homeowner association or a condo association. But the thing is, who, you know, how can they tell you what to do in your own home? The law says they can, especially because it's contractual. It's a contractual situation, and it's presumed that when you bought that property in a condo, you knew you were buying a condo. Presumably, you, you, you paid condo dues, right? So you're buying into a condo, and there's rules and regulations that govern that. But the bigger problem here is she, she did not answer the complaint, and she did not show up for court. Uh, I, I actually will technically say that I don't know that she didn't answer the complaint. But it does say she missed her court appearance, and a judgment was granted, some guessing as a trial date or one of the important dates. In some cases, if you get sued and you're told to appear in court for a settlement conference and you don't show up, a judge will just say, okay, well, the other side's not even here. I guess they don't really care for a settlement conference. Uh, and quite often, the orders from the court will say, if you do not appear at this date, you may be in default. So at the very least, she missed an important court date. Don't know if it's a trial or something else, but the point is, that's what happened. Court records show the foreclosure case is still ongoing with another hearing scheduled for October. So, interestingly, the condo association appears to have simply asked for cash damages or money damages, and they got a, a judgment of almost $40,000, which over the last decade and a half has turned into $588,000. But... Now they're going through the foreclosure process. And so that's another legal process. And there's a couple lessons to be learned here. One is if you buy into a condo association or homeowner association, make sure you read the rules. If the rules aren't something that you want to live by, get out. Don't even, don't even go there. Don't go there. But also understand that the rules are not all obvious. So I remember reading a story about the people in the place where you weren't allowed to have the drapes the wrong color if they're visible from the street. And I'm going, are they allowed to do that? And it's like, did you read the rules? Because you would have seen that in there. And I mean, you know, the types of shrubs you can plant in your yard is another one where I've heard people say, but I, I wanted to plant this kind of a tree. And they said, no, that's not on the list of approved shrubbery. Bring me a shrubbery that fits the rules. So... That's one issue. But the other issue is if you get sued, okay, you have to answer the complaint or respond otherwise because you could be in default and just lose everything as a result of your no-show. And I've had people tell me, they go, Steve, you know, years ago I got sued. I don't even know what happened with it, uh, default, something or other. And I go, why didn't you answer it? They go, well, I couldn't afford an attorney. And it's like, well, that I understand to an extent, but you understand that you're going to get hit with this huge judgment. If you weren't liable for the judgment, having avoided that by paying an attorney, that amount you paid the attorney might seem worthwhile then. But there are also legal aid societies and all kinds of charitable organizations that do provide attorneys to people who are in dire straits. And there's also people who will defend you uh, based on what the underlying, you know, 
problem is. So I feel very sorry for the woman. Um, I completely understand. I have some allergies myself. Uh, and uh, years and years and years ago, I used to have asthma issues, not anymore. But, um, you know, when you don't have them quite figured out and you find yourself having a hard time breathing, it, it, it's not the same as, you know, I have a cut on my finger and I need to put a Band-Aid on it. It's, it's frightening. It's frightening. So I, I feel for her, but she didn't show up at that court date. And she says that she was sick. But you understand that if you are sick and you call the court and say, I'm sick, can we please put this off for one week? Most courts will. And as you can imagine, I've been practicing law for 33 years. Uh, I'm a relatively healthy guy, but I've been sick once or twice. And now, as an attorney, I can get other attorneys to cover stuff for me, which, I, which I've done many times. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure once or twice I've had to call and say, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sick. And in, in the days before Zoom, they'd say, oh, okay, as a courtesy, we'll adjourn this for you. And so if she had called the court and said she was sick, they may have adjourned it for her. But the other thing you have to remember is people are going to ask, well, Steve, can't she just appeal this? She could have appealed this because once you get defaulted, they send you a copy. Then when they apply for a judgment, they'll let you know we're about to apply, apply for a judgment. Do you want to come down and object to that? And it doesn't look like she did that either. And then a judgment gets entered. And the day the judgment gets entered, a clock starts running on how long you can appeal by right, meaning you have the automatic right to appeal. And in most states, you get one appeal off the first adverse ruling like that. So she could have appealed, but quite often the appeal time period is 21 days, 28 days, something like that. And then beyond that, sometimes you can appeal, but you have to get court permission to do so, and you have to have extremely good reasons or good cause to have the court say, okay, I'm going to bend the rules for you. I've had a person walk into my office and show me a judgment that was entered 22 days earlier. Uh, or 29 days earlier, or whichever, the, whichever the, the, the situation was in that particular court where that was one day late. Even if I got it filed that day, which I couldn't obviously do because, you know, time and all that. And you can then file a motion, request leave to file a late appeal and explain what good cause you have for that. But it's very, very difficult to go into court and say, Your Honor, uh, my client wants leave to appeal late. And the judge goes, what's, what's your good cause? My client just didn't get around to it. That's a tough one because they go, well, when your client got served with a summons and complaint and was told they're being sued and they didn't answer the complaint or respond properly and they got defaulted then a judgment got entered against them, you know, they should understand these are serious things and there's time limits there. So I, I have a lot of sympathy for the woman um, and I feel really bad the fact that this has turned out to be a $588,000 dispute. But the bigger problem, like I said, is, one, she missed her court appearance, which sounds like a trial. And then, two, um, it sounds like she had a good defense. You know, she, she could have raised the defense that I've still got my carpeting. But by not going to the court appearance, you kind of lose your ability to make that argument. So it's unfortunate. But if you're thinking about buying a condo, or a home in a homeowner association, make sure you read those rules and make sure you're okay with them. Because I'm going to let you know right now, I get emails and messages all the time from people who go, Steve, I'm in a condo. I'm in a home owners association run neighborhood and I like them. I, and I've had people tell me that. They go, the fees are reasonable. They take care of the common areas and, and uh, they don't have any crazy rules. I like them because it keeps the neighborhoods looking clean and neat and tidy. And so I don't want anyone to think that just because I do stories like this, every condo association board out there is crazy or the rules are impossible to follow. Uh, they're not. They make the news because they're outliers. So there you go. Woman fears foreclosure after carpet dispute with her condo association from WLS and Pistone and Jason Knowles wrote that. John sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I've never once been able to explain my car trouble to a mechanic without resorting to sound effects.